welcome back to the Basic Bible Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Thompson, and joining us once again, uh, one of our favorite guests, the author behind the Ray's Rambling blog, the uh, director of the Janesville Community Center, the favorite teacher's aide at the Janesville campus at Rock County Christian School, the one, the only, Ray Jewell. Ray, welcome back. Thanks, Kevin. It's always a pleasure to be here, and I'm looking forward to our discussion today because we're talking about God today. Yes. In fact, I should have added the star of the Raining in Ray podcast. The star? The well, star. You the, are the, the Ray in the Raining in the, Ray. The, the reason for it, anyway. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't talk so much, yeah, you know, right. that would, it mean, wouldn't even be a podcast. Exactly. So. If I were, but then I'd never be on, so... <laughs> All right, well, we are uh, right here in the thick of it in our series on the Ten Commandments. In fact, um, you know, we we record these at different times, and this is actually the last one we're recording. Right. Um, This is episode four. We're talking about the third commandment. So uh, let's go ahead and read it from Exodus 20, verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. So, Ray, what does it mean to take the name of the Lord in vain? Well, to use it in a way that is disrespectful, hmm. um, as you've got on the on the notes here, empty. It's yeah. It, it's meaningless. I mean, people will use God's name often as a swear word. Yeah. Uh, in other ways that. You know, and and a lot of these people don't even believe that he exists. And right. So they're but they're using it, using his name in a way that is highly inappropriate. So yeah, vain just simply means empty or useless, uh, something that has no purpose behind it. Mm-hmm. And then the other, just in our definition category here, a name. Um, you know, I was reading in Kevin DeYoung's book on uh, the commandments, which I'll recommend later. We should have been recommending this whole series. Mm-hmm. Um, he he makes it you know it makes an interesting point in that of the Ten Commandments, this is one of those that doesn't even seem like a commandment. At least we don't treat it that way. It's just like, hey, watch your language. It's okay, mm-hmm. but watch your language. Why why do we make a big deal about that? Why do we make a big deal about his name? And so a name just to define what that is. A name is not just a title, a given, but there's so much more to it. Yeah. In the, especially in the Old Testament, well, and even Jesus would give people a different name. It's yeah. it's the essence of who the name is describing. Yeah. And when when we talk about God, I mean this this is describing the Creator of of the universe, uh, the transcendent yet eminent person at the same time. The God, the, the, the Trinity, the, the triune God, God the three in one, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Just sitting here thinking about just the awesomeness of that name and all the different names that God has, especially again throughout the Old Testament. Jehovah Jireh and uh, all the others that speak to a different aspect of who he is. That's the that's why yeah. the name of God is so important. It's right. this, we're talking about um, a person that is so beyond our understanding. In fact, the only way we really come to even know a little bit about him is because he's revealed himself to yeah. us. And so a, a name, as you said, gets down to the very essence. Yeah. Um, Jill and I would joke, my wife and I would joke when we didn't have kids, when we started having kids... Because we're teachers, there are just certain names we have to stay away from. Oh, yeah. Because we, that, that name conjures up a person. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're like, oh, no, we had that. So I don't want to think about that student when I think about my own child. And so we associate a name with someone who they are. So when we adopted four kids, we made a decision not to change their names. Because their name is a part of who they are, a part of their journey. And we didn't want to rob them of that. Mm-hmm. Now, we added on the Thompson name, because that's, again, part of who they are now. Sure. But we didn't want to take away who they once were. Right. And so a name is, is not just, again, a title, but it, as you said, it really gets down to the essence. And so 
if we mock the name of God or use it in a flippant way, we are saying that God is not worthy of who he is mm -hmm. and that God is just a flippant who cares type of thing. Yeah, and that's, you know, that really goes along with the mindset that basically says God is just a, an old man in the sky, right. grandfather type, who, who is duty-bound to give us anything and everything that we ask for. Yeah. Jesus said to pray in my name, but he also says to pray in the will of God. Yeah. You know, he doesn't say just pray for whatever you want. He says pray according to the will of God and myself, and then these things will be given to you. Well, it's interesting you say that because when oftentimes when we end our prayers, we end it with, in the name of Jesus, I pray, mm -hmm. or in Jesus' name, I pray. And what we're saying there is not, it's not like a special uh, code to get what we want. Right. It's not, or, a, not a magic potion or right. something like so that. So as long as I mention this person, you know, it's like, you know, mention that guy, you get a special discount or something. Right. So when we talk about praying uh, in Jesus' name, we are praying in his will. Yeah. Right. Um, and then we're saying, it, as if Jesus were praying himself, mm -hmm. we want his will to be done. And so again, we're associating a person with that name. Mm -hmm. And so God takes this pretty serious. Back in the book of Leviticus, and I'm not saying we need to do this today, but uh, Leviticus 24, 15, and um, I have the wrong verse here. Um, but anyway, um, oh, here we go. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's, it's verse 16. Okay. Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall be surely put to death. Mm -hmm. The congregation is going to pick up stone him. Um, that's a pretty serious thing. And then, um, if we're kind of moving into our scripture section here, Psalm 8 talks about praising him and giving his name the praise that it deserves. Again, we're not just talking about a word. Um, o oh, oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. It's not just like the name of Jesus or the name of Yahweh. It's just like a nice sounding name and we really like it. it it's talking about worshiping God. Um, in, in his glory. And we have to be careful that we're doing this. You know, there are some songs, for instance, that will mm. use the name of Jesus. And I don't want to get in any trouble with anybody, but... Oh, like, just say it. You know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. What about that name? That, that song doesn't go very far. Mm. <laughs> the, 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 the name of Jesus, the name of God, is very powerful. Uh, if something is done in the name of God, it's going to happen. If he says, I'm, you know, do this because of my name and do, you know, things happen because mm. of that. And that's, that's a crucial thing to remember. And I think we'll get into it later. But when we worship God, that's a holy, that's a yeah. holy event. Right. Um, Psalm, uh, Psalms, Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. we're told... Um, as, as part of that, that his name is to be hallowed. His name mm -hmm. is to be holy, mm -hmm. set apart. It's not just like another name. Right. There's more than just something about that name. Mm -hmm. You just said it, 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 it's literally everything. Um, and, and, and part of that is, as you just said, it, it, it's even a salvation issue. There is no other name under heaven where my men must be saved, Acts mm -hmm. 4, 2, or... Uh, Romans ten thirteen for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's those are pretty important things right there. Yeah, name and essence really go hand in hand, yeah. and um, that's why I think we really need to be careful. You know, the Jews got to the point where they wouldn't even mention right. the name of God. Um, Maybe overly so. Yeah, it became, it became like a lot of other things that the 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 Pharisees and Sadducees did. It became more of a you know a work type thing instead yeah. of uh, any kind of worship behind it or or honoring God or standing in awe of God. They just flippantly didn't say His name. Right, and uh, it lost the. A lot of the meaning that it, that it held when I think they first started that practice, and and we're guilty of that kind of stuff today sure. too. Oh yeah, and that's uh, 
that's a scary thought because we're dealing with Almighty God. Right. So let's get into our dangers to avoid. I'm kind of picking up the pace a little bit because, right, uh, this podcast right now is the only thing standing between you and I and Buffalo Wild Wings. Yep. And I'm getting kind of hungry. Me too. Um, not that we're just going to skip over stuff, but <laughs> dangers to avoid. Uh, Kevin DeYoung in his book mentioned three things. Basically, you're talking about taking the Lord's name in vain. It means you're using God's name in the service of something false, mm. frivolous, or phony. Mm-hmm. So something false. You know, we, we, you and I have complained about this before, but when you're using God's name somehow authoritatively to back up your plans, mm-hmm. you know, Ray, God told me. Yeah. that we need to uh, start this podcast. Or God told me that we shouldn't do uh, X, Y, and Z. It's like, you're, you're using the name of God to back up your own agenda. Mm-hmm. That's, that's horrible. That's, that, that's uh, manipulating God and, and, and showing that you don't see him as sovereign king. You see him as something to be manipulated to your own advantage. Right, and, uh, you know... You may think that you're manipulating God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But someday you're going to wake up and realize, hopefully before the judgment, that, you know, wait a second, what am I doing with this? Because right. you don't mess around with the Holy God. Yeah. And you see that throughout Scripture. Um, and in essence, the fire lied to the Holy Spirit, lied to yeah. the church, and they died. Yeah, um, there are other examples of that kind of thing happening. I mean, uh, Balaam—he kept saying he was a prophet from God and whatnot, but he kept mm. trying to destroy Israel, and that just wasn't—you know—it was so inconsistent with what right. God had planned for Israel. If anybody was going to destroy Israel or uh, punish Israel, it's going to be God, right? And that's consistent with what we see in the Old Testament. So also, uh, Scripture warns us about vain repetition. Yeah. As if somehow mentioning Jesus' name over and over and over again is somehow going to impress him. Sort of like a, a, a mantra or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's... Or, you know, even just using it in useless or meaningless ways. I always tell my students, you know, every Sunday, I often hear in church people use the name of the Lord in vain. Yeah. They're singing songs. And they don't care what they're singing. They're not. They're not like listening. They're just singing what they're you know, by rote or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they're not focused on what am I saying here? What am I talking about Jesus here? How am I describing the Lord right. in this? Or sometimes it's just in prayer. Mm. Dear God, I hope God that we have a good day, God, and God, just uh, help us in our day, God. And I, I always, you know, when I hear someone pray in public, they especially the older guys, would take on this different voice mm. and use God often in their, you know, their uh, statements of whatever they called it. And I mean, from what I've gathered in the, in the Bible, a simple prayer. Yeah. You know, God knows what we need. Right. He knows what's on our heart. Uh, he knows whether we're being truthful, honest, and obedient to him or not, just keep it simple. So, and, Ray, you're, you might have to rein me in here for a second. Okay. I want to go off on a little tangent here. Cause you, you kind of opened the door for this. Okay. But one of the things that irritates me about prayer is that prayer is prayer to God. Um, it's not a preaching time. Right. It's not for everyone else. Mm-hmm. Now, if, if you're mentioning theological truth that you're praying, that's, that's fine. But I, I remember... Sitting, uh, I gotta be careful here because the person I'm gonna mention has actually been a guest on this pro- podcast before. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure he doesn't listen faithfully. Anyway, I, w- I was sitting with this uh, preacher friend of mine, and we were at a restaurant. It and wasn't. It wasn't me. <laughs> and don't do this today because we're going to a restaurant after this. Yeah. Um, we're sitting at a restaurant, and me being the super spiritual guy I am, said, "Hey, why don't you, my preacher friend, why don't you pray over our meal?" And he said, okay. So I closed my, my eyes, bowed my head, and all of a sudden I hear, Dear Father God, hearing us right now is someone who doesn't know you as their Savior. And I pray for their soul, and I'm like trying to duck Amen. under the table. Missionary praying. Oh, man. It's just like, you know, 
I did man, that, I this did was... that once. I did that once. I've never done it again. Oh that was man! Years ago. I mean, I, if you want to, have, you know, if he just said, "Hey, let's get up and, and talk and, and try to witness everybody in this in this restaurant," fine. But man, this is not, you know, prayer time is not for that. No, it's not. Um, now, it, people who could be listening to this, I'm sure, could could benefit from. Uh, our, our conversation with God, but man, our conversation with God, uh, God doesn't need the gospel. Anyway, um, man, that sucks. All right, so let's talk about some other things. Uh, dangerous to avoid. Obviously, as you mentioned before, we don't want to use, ever, ever, ever use the name of the Lord as a curse word. Yeah, but um, man, is that common. It is. Even amongst people who claim to be Christian. And that's something even when I, when I you know, I used to work at a, an auto parts store, um, and these are some Pretty unsafe people, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. And uh, they'd use the Lord's name in vain. And I'd, I'd call them on it. I said, listen, mm-hmm. I get that you know you may not be a Christian like I am, and that doesn't say it, but this is something that's very personal to me. Mm-hmm. When you use this name as a curse word, you're talking about someone I love dearly, someone who I've dedicated my entire life to. And if you would, I'm, I'm asking you not to do that, because that's offensive to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't hear people saying, oh, what in Muhammad's name is going on here? Right? Yeah, right. You know, what the Hitler? I can't figure out. <laughs> well, I, I, it was interesting. I, I had a job where I did a lot of traveling. I was basically selling junk jewelry. But two of the people that were involved at that company, when they heard somebody using the Lord's name in vain, they would say, praise his name. Mm. So they took what someone meant it as a negative yeah. and turned it into a praise time of the name of, of mm. God or of Jesus. And that, I thought that was pretty unique. Not something that I would necessarily do, but right. uh, I'm not opposed to using his name in that way. You know, it's something else that's popular today. It's not a curse word, but just OMG. Oh my God. Yeah. I hear that quite a bit, even amongst uh, Christian young people. Yeah not thinking about what they're actually saying or oh uh good lord what is happening or are you so- well and, then and i'll ask them i'll stop and say listen are you praying are we having a prayer service right now can i can i join you yeah um otherwise cut it out well then i remember when i was uh, growing up there was a lot of talk about the the form you know the the uh to try to avoid using the name of the Lord mm. in vain, you know, golly or, or gosh, gosh or, whatever. or whatever, yeah. Uh, just, it's just, uh, or like my dad, we used to, we had a pool table that was given to us and it was, wasn't the greatest thing, but he would, my dad's statement was, God bless America when something didn't yeah. go his way. So, you know, how is that right. justified? Scripturally, it's not. No, and you know we, and yet we probably have all been guilty of it, and sometimes we just don't know it. Right. But I think that we need to hold the name of God in reverence. Yeah. And that's that's crucial. Absolutely. And you know what? I think the last thing on the list is probably the most yeah. damning, dangerous thing. Yeah. And that's, that's using God's name. What for false doctrine? Yeah, basically you're you're using God to promote things that God would never uh, say. You know, whether it's God gave me this prophecy or God want. And I, I've heard I I how many times do I hear people say, "Well, God wants me to be happy." Oh, <laughs> and so therefore I'm divorcing my wife. Yeah, God yeah. wants me to be happy. Therefore I'm going to engage in sexual immorality or I'm going to. Uh, do something dishonest or steal from... I've even heard someone say steal from work because, uh, you know, they have enough money and I don't. Mm-hmm. And God wants me to... Whoa, what are you doing? Yeah. And it's 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 terrible. It's horrible and it's, it's condemning. Right. And we haven't even touched on one of our favorite topics, the, <laughs> the prosperity oh, gospel. Oh, yeah, people. yeah. Oh, I mean, man. They're always saying, you know, God will... will uh, bless you greatly if you will send us this amount of money. And oh, yeah, I'll send you my prayer cloth. Yeah, uh, that I personally prayed over. Yeah. In fact, you can buy the basic Bible uh, prayer cloth that I and Ray have personally put our hands on. No. Uh, <laughs> for your seed gift. You can yeah, call it right. a seed gift. Yeah, yeah. No, I, re- uh, I remember as a kid, I was sick and at home and I was watching Oral Roberts one mm. time. And he said, just put your hand on the TV screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> and, you know, I, I remember a Sunday school teacher I had when I was a kid. Didn't last long in our church, thankfully. Yeah. Um, and he told us, I think it was in fourth or fifth grade, and he said, uh, fifth grade, and he said, you know, if you put money in the offering plate, God is required. He is bound to give you three times that amount back. And he'd tell a story. I remember when I was a kid, I only had a dollar, and I put it in there. And you know what? By the end of that week, I had three dollars in my pocket. It was just like, are you kidding me? I'm glad he was. He, he didn't teach that Sunday school class. And, and, I mean, and he's telling this to impressionable right. fourth graders. That, I mean, that's downright yeah. sacrilegious. Thankfully, I had a dad who was smarter than me. Yeah. And uh, that, that's usually that. the way it is. <laughs> and we don't want to tell admit my kids it, but... that. Um, all right, so in terms of application, I think, Ray, you hit the nail on the head perfectly. We are to hold the name of God in reference. Yeah. yeah. Think before you speak. Mm-hmm. Um, so recommendations for going uh, deeper. I bet, have been recommending, and I think it's an excellent resource, uh, The Ten Commandments by Kevin DeYoung, which is where I got a lot of this information from today. And then also Words from the Fire by Al Mohler. It's also been a good resource. Mm-hmm. Would you add anything to that, Ray? Well, just, you know, certainly just stay in the scriptures. Jesus did not, he, he said, he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Yeah. And he didn't change any of those except maybe the Sabbath, the, mm-hmm. the fourth commandment. But even that, I just the day was changed, I think, more than anything. Yeah. And... Um, it's just, you know, instead of just buying into this, it's all about grace. And I'm not saying it isn't, but it's also all about obedience. It's not about cheap truth. grace. Yeah, right. Not at all. And, and God, you know, God's got us. I, I think that that's very true. But we have some responsibility here to be obedient, to... To revere him. Well, it's, what Paul said in, in, in Romans, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Right. May it never be. I think C.S. Lewis had an excellent illustration about this holding God in reverence uh, in the line of the witch in the wardrobe, where the, the children have come to Narnia for the first time. Uh, Edmund has already betrayed the rest of them, and he's not with them when the kids meet. Um, Aslan for the first time and they're talking to Mr. Beaver about it. Well, no, you you know, he's not your friend. He's the king of the forest. He's the king of the universe. You know, it will it, it be a time of excitement yet awe hmm. uh, and trembling and all that that would go in that. And if, if we're not coming to God like that on a regular basis, yeah. I, you know, I think that there's something wrong with me. Mm. Certainly not so nothing wrong with God. Right. Absolutely. There's something wrong with me if I don't have a sense of awe when I worship with the rest of the body on a Sunday or even like during the week when when I'm writing my blog or uh, if we as we interact uh, as we do different things tears will come to my eyes yeah. because I'm standing in the presence of Almighty God. Right. And it's like you know, nothing else even comes close hmm. to comparing to that. All right, we're going to wrap it up there. I'm going to rein you in a little bit. Although that that, that was worth uh, <laughs> listening to. So I, I, I even though uh, I'm, I'm hungry and I wanted to get to uh, to be dubs, uh, that was that was a good rant. Uh, it was worthy of listening to. So anyway, uh, check us out www.basicbiblepodcast.com. Uh, that's to me dot org. Don't go to dot com. I don't know what that is. Basicbiblepodcast.org. <laughs> And it's, then, it's probably uh, prosperity. Yeah, oh, great. <laughs> then check us out on Twitter at Basic Biblecast, Instagram on the same uh, title as well. Next week we're into the fourth commandment, so join us back for that. So until next time, have a great rest of your week.